Dzień dobry. Witam Państwa na tegorocznych igrzyskach. Good afternoon. Welcome to this year's edition of Freedom Gaze. In a moment we will begin uh, our discussion on uh, the end of globalization as we know it. And our guests are Andrika Bochniarz, the founder and president of Lebiatan Employers Confederation, Jan Krzysztof Bielecki, former PM of the Polish government, and Bogusław Rabota, editor-in-chief of Rzeczpospolita Paper. In March, the beginning of uh, coronavirus pandemic showed that in the globalized world, problems and threats spread instantaneously. On the other hand, we show how fragile this globalization is and how little is needed to interrupt, to cancel global supply chains, to question whatever we are accustomed to, like easy and cheap traveling. So we heard voices that it's either cost or punishment for globalization. We had opinions that the globalization needs to be terminated, that the world after the pandemic would be more local with short supply chains, manufacturing closer to the markets. On the other hand, as we could hear a talk before the panel, the work changed, the form of providing and using services changed. You can provide services from any place in the world. You can work from any place. It's not just services for businesses, it's also education, entertainment, or even medical services. And observing that phenomena and the processes that had started before the pandemic, like the industrial uh, European industrial policy or uh, trade wars that we could witness a couple of years ago. I'd like to put forward a thesis that the future of globalization is regional or local industry with short supply chains, but global services. I, I would like to ask you to address the statement. Is it likely? What can impact its range and dynamics? Ms. Bochniarz, would you please be the first one? Thank you. Well, I'd like to start with a positive touch because we are quite uh, pessimistic about the pandemic. But I need to say that this leap that has happened also in our country that uh, has never been the leader in digitalization, that leap in using the global services is impressive. And I do believe that once the situation stabilizes, we perhaps may be happy that it happened as it did because I remember numerous reports how much time you would need to achieve the level that particle households, corporations, governments, our Polish administrations that are just lagging behind to start using those uh, services. So this is one of the aspects of the digital globalization and we can use it with great satisfaction. So I would be far from saying that the globalization is over. I'd rather think it's a new formula and it is a fact that even before the pandemic, we had known that the globalization, apart from its positive effects for such countries like Poland in particular, had had numerous problems it faced. We are not able to list all of them, but just let me mention the role of huge corporations, which were the key authors of globalization because such huge companies could afford to think how to cut costs and move to any place in the world where you can reduce expenditure without paying attention to the global effects of such decisions. There was, there was research that showed that in 2018, out of 100 key economic entities, on the three were the states, the others were great corporations. They were a problem at that time. Everybody knew 
that their operation had to be regulated and the EU started to do that to some extent. And this is one of the challenges we are facing and the globalization costed. And today it is one of our tasks. Another issue is uh, the role of China. It's not that the role of China started to be important from Saturday to Sunday. It grew consequently in time. In 1995, it was some 2% of the global GDP. Now it's about 18. And as we know, it is a country that has grown fastest. We know its role will still keep increasing that neither WTO, no particular governments, nor the EU uh, have defined the problem. Neither can cope with that. Only Trump, with his operation far from being legal and predictable, he started this great war. It's unnecessary, in my opinion, but this is a problem we need to cope with. There will be no globalization without China. And today, China, because it, it managed to overcome the pandemic crisis faster, China drives the economy, Polish economy included, so we cannot escape from that. We need to look for new solutions, new regulations, new rules for operations. And the, the, the price we pay for the pandemic, quite high price, would be rewarded by finding good solution. This is something we should focus on within individual states within the EU, within the transatlantic cooperation, international organizations. This is something we should look for, how to cope in this new time and to use both bad and good experience so that all that serves the majority of people in the world. Well, the, the cost, environmental, climatic, social, cost of, of uh, the globalization, transferring production to less developed, developed countries. A solution would be here, the EU tax on CO2 emission. So the question goes to Mr. Bielecki, do you believe that the EU is capable to reintroduce industry into its borders and would the tax be an efficient instrument? You asked uh, where we are in the globalization process. Let me quote a Nobel winner economist last year, together with his wife from MIT, and he said that the globalization is on the edge point. That means as we could see the most uh, uh, known curve, the normal distribution curve like I had, and when it breaks and it starts to go down, that's the break point. So we should say that the break point is happening now and it co was caused by a number of events simultaneously. The slowdown, economic slowdown that turned into recession, then the pandemic that thousands of pages were written about. And finally, if we go with Biden, who three years ago in Davos said, in 2017 said he was a free marketer and supporter of globalization, yet he could see the discrepancies between the, the, the head of the tour, the, the peloton and, and the tail that is starting to fall off and sees more and more problems. And that's why inequalities are mentioned. If you sum up all these processes with politicians on top of that, who say 
we see the threats and now we need to find our own formula for that. So if you ask about the US where President Trump for three years using tariffs and commercial war tried to change the structure of this, his trade balance, yet he failed, or the EU that declares various projects, all that shows how on the one hand you see the, the, the existence of a political need to address this breakpoint. On the other hand, how difficult it is to get out of it. And at this moment, everybody is looking for their way out. And we have a political backlash on that. A political retreat, or as Professor Reinhardt says, it's a regressive nature of the crisis showing up and now we need to find our place and obviously there is no quick solution and as you asked we can get back to that in the second part how far we have globalization how far we have regionalization but today i read to my great surprise that this huge semiconductors market which is so vital for china just to put their chip wherever they can and sell it wherever possible this huge semiconductor market where the chinese import is equal to the total polish import some 250 billion us dollars more or less all the Chinese import, and they ideologically say they will restrict it, they will make their own production. And it turns out that those giants, huge tech corps, have already started to make their own chip. And that Intel chip turns out not to be used any longer in Apple equipment because they have started to manufacture their own chip. So it's a tylo made production, not in national aspects, local aspect, on the corporate aspect. So everything is under reconstruction. The question is how Poland and the EU will react. I understand you as being skeptical to public or EU or national politics can influence the globalization process by customs or other regulations, but there is an option that the business will understand itself, it's safe, safer or cheaper to make products somewhere else than in far Asia. I, I must say that's a perfect summary. I do believe so. I, I think that business feels the politics and if business sees that a state appoints an agency to obstruct foreign investments with certain criteria, then the business will try to adapt. If the business sees that using a contractor in China would be risky, they will all of a sudden find uh, Indians who come with a better offer. We are an old democracy, well tested. We are not a regime like the Chinese. We will not blackmail you like China is trying to blackmail Australia, combining politics and business. So as you said, I wanted to say that the business knows how to open eyes wide and find its place in the continuously changing situation on the break point. So we have now moved from China to India, which still is not close. Mr. Krabota, how would you see the light in the tunnel for the European industry? Well, frankly speaking, I not very much. The, speaking about chips, processors, one of the leading computer chips is Taiwan. It is still China, yet not continental China, the island. And the 
supply chain has not been interrupted for a second. All the world during the pandemic bought and used processes manufactured in Taiwan. There was not a slightest threat of interruption. But let me begin with, with something different. The pandemic, which caused this form of, of uh, communication we are in now, pandemic is the child of globalization. It happened because of globalization, the transfers of goods and people on long distances. And only globalization is able to cope with the pandemic. We can see that on the still an existing but potential market for the COVID vaccine. Ten corporations in the world are working on it. I don't think that Poland, Belarus, Ukraine, Botswana, Cameroon, Nigeria or Venezuela would be able to produce a vaccine and the issue. That's the domain of huge corporation, huge capital, and they can save us, especially global companies like Pfizer or any other that you know very well. Only such corporations are capable to make a vaccine to, to stop the pandemic pandemic is a child of globalization and the globalization is the factor that can kill the pandemic. Let's move to globalization as such. I believe we need no definition, we feel it. It's a global scale of interpersonal relations in production services, etc. I believe what is happening today, the pandemic, is a turbulence that will not interrupt globalization. Moreover, it will intensify. Why? Because we cannot change the structure of allocating natural resources in the world. Then technology is the uh, universalizing factor and it's still working starting from item one the chinese have already bought the entire global nickel resources in a moment there will be no other option but to buy batteries for the electrifying world in another place than china climate globalization in is for instance that in summer and and uh, spring we buy oranges that are made in uh, Argentine and Brazil because there is no vegetation for that fruit in Europe. People have learned that they can satisfy their needs all the year round. So the international trade needs to be. Technology is obvious and free market means that it after the global supply chains are restored we have the situation that chinese or taiwanese chips would be twice cheaper than those made in germany and there will be no protection mechanism in europe then business will buy the chips from taiwan or any other country where it's cheaper and last but not least we have angels of globalization. They are huge corporations, GAFA, Google, Apple, Amazon and Facebook. They are, they spin technology worldwide. They are global companies. They cannot be stopped in their development. They can be split like it happened in the US with the steel and telecom industries in the US, but they will still impose technology to the world then we have at least two players with global ambitions that is the us and china that's another topic china has just colonized south asia the us once trump has left will return to the global ambitions russia has has never given up so the factors that drive the globalization mechanism are still active, but obviously globalizations are thousands, hundreds of problems of inequality, of income, of economies. This is something we people in the future, the nearest future, will have to solve. Oh, full stop. 
uh, we had the notion that globalization is economically profitable so there is strong tendency to keep it from companies from customers who want to buy cheaper we before the panel we could complain about virtual uh, meetings and conferences but they drastically cut on costs of different services of course that tr trend of we we had this uh, services export for business before poland benefited from it but when it has accelerated so dramatically the future may be that we will buy all the services from countries with cheaper labor force like we will use medical uh, teleservices from a physician in india uh, how this out of industry yet service uh, wise aspect of globalization would you assess it as highly likely or once the problems are over over we will return to our old habits to personal contact with offices industries etc Ms. Bochniusz yes i think the world will be prospering for equality for balance only today we can see that employees who can engage in teleworking let's remember it is not such a great number of employees in economies like poland which is not that dependent on services so these employees were pretty happy now it has continued for a number of months we don't know how long that is going to continue still what is missing is the regular face-to-face -face contact and discussion things that made companies culture and standards development that was an indicator of a company's value and quality to my liking when we have vaccine will feel much safer and will have the hybrid way of functioning this is a new class development that is being developed at the moment those who are teleworkers who do not have to commute who do not have to waste time who may balance their lives speaking about task division and those who cannot possibly do that because there must be some garbage collectors people working in shops so if automation robotization continues still there is a vast number of employees who work the old way this causes new problems little have we spoken about it we've decided we've discussed about regulations on teleworking but this is just the beginning what will follow are different problems there is a question of us using our experiences poland i think is the example of a country whose economic structure is pretty balanced therefore we've been the upper hand in many crises we were not dependent on financial services like britain's so this is the lesson for the future let's keep this balance how much industry how many services when we speak about this composition this is a challenge for us how we shall shape the structure of economy it cannot be possibly subjected to expectations of big corporations that will want to utilize the fact that we have well-educated people whose remuneration is smaller compared to other places many interesting things have been happening like european minimum wage proposal which will revolutionize our relations here it's a fantastic time in my opinion 
we are ahead of challenges that we have to cope and face. I think that Poland, who's been facing challenges all the time, our transformation is an ongoing process to find our place, makes us ready. When I look and see what happens in the pandemic's time, from the point of view of economic milieu's preparation, well, I need to pay kudos for them coping much better compared to administration that seems to be at a loss, to seems to be in chaos. If we bet on working with these people, developing new regulations, we stand the chance to be in line what is happening in the European Union. The European Union and its projects focuses on green deal, digitization and competitiveness, as if it was tailor-made program for Poland. So when the recovery programs are being created, may this be the result of our discussion of us prospering the best possible solutions. As it was the case 30 years ago plus, when we are facing this transformation challenge, we were in the world. That was a big question for us. Now we are much more ready. So shaping the new world in Poland and in Europe, we should be even more active. We'll have more to say, but I might be over optimistic here. Yeah, you were pretty optimistic. Digitization, we are coping quite well compared to the starting point of our economy and society. Speaking about recovery funds, there is a step back in the form of the difficult budgetary negotiations, put it mildly, because Poland is going to object to the fund, recovery funds. Let's go outside day-to-day -day politics. Can't you see the threat in this green aspect? We're not green enough to find our bearings in the green deal of the European Union. Not only do we speak about regulations, but about costs, because our energy will be less competitive to compare to the energy generated in the neighboring countries. Prime Minister goes first. The Prime Minister is required to switch his microphone on. Indeed. Yes, if you switch a microphone on, people can hear you. Sometimes it might be harmful when you switch it on and say too much. We've been speaking for 30 minutes. Let's look at some kind of different interpretation of what has been happening around us. If we agree that this is the bending or tipping point, as we can see at the caution distribution, there's this Clinton's famous saying of 1992, economy fool. Now this slogan should be replaced with the politics fool. This overriding importance of politics and finding our bearings will delineate the future for Europe's development and development of Poland. This hops world where the security is most important. When we don't look at economic feasibility of infrastructures, networks, uh, heal way, but we have this safety and security perception. When we look at the pharmaceutical supplies system and we say, no, 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 we want to have safety and security because we've got monopolies that pose a threat. Containers market, wherever you look, all of a sudden you see that there is politics. We were speaking about recovery plan and structural change towards green economy. This is politics too. China disagrees to 2050 zero emissions net. So the question is, 
the Europe has been organizing itself. Biden states are organizing because he calls a spade a spade. Values-based diplomacy is what he's referring to. Speaking about human rights and rule of law. So Chinese people do not fit into this picture, not to mention some of the European representatives of this anti-stream. Therefore, politics, policy, the ability to integrate in broadly defined safety and security will have its impact. The Green Deal, the Green Transformation is very important at the moment, combined with digitization. It's become, it becomes more profitable, yet it will require the new political attitude. Social dialogue, as you can see, all kinds of capabilities that are not associated with economy. An economist can work in the hinterland, but social culture, understanding politics, processes, understanding the place of Poland in the world is important. Let them have their say. I am an economist myself. I shouldn't be kept in the closet. I should be working with the people who are professionals on culture. We could devise something together. I don't know what you're saying is more of a chance or a threat. One and the other. These are challenges. Me and uh, Mr. Hrabota are saying this is our identification. This is the balance between the perspective of actions, either political thinking domination to the detriment of the state or some kind of openness. Let me give you an example. Services, streamable and non-streamable services. If these are streamables, they'll be prospering for new markets. Poland with Amazon's uh, data processing centers up hand compared to Austria or Switzerland, but streamable ones will be looking for other markets like Vietnam or Malaysia. Non-streamable services will remain here, will have uh, cobblers and uh, tire fitters simple service providers like PV panel installers. One more thing that is very important, that is the heart of the problem. Today's economy in the new global setting is the economy of competences. Europe can be a winner if it retains its competences. If we have this IQ value that we have been using for hundreds of years and therefore we have imposed specific solutions. This IQ is transferable. It has been transferred. It was transferred in the 19th century to the States. Now the quick transformation in Asia. We have too little time to give you examples. Chinese are ahead of us in many technology areas. Poland and Europe, are we coping? What I have been observing, nothing has been happening to build the economy of competences. Competent people migrate to Germany, US, Austria. I raised a number of wonderful computer graphic specialists in Polsat television and left for Israel. And now they can work anywhere for global companies, for internationals. We don't have competences development mechanism in Poland. Minister of Education, Mr. Czarnek, uh, I'm sorry to speak about today's policy, is against competences development. Either we have open university discourse, competences, open market uh, workplaces, open market, technology, technology hubs acceptance, enhance it, or we lose in this debate. 
and we'll be discussing with other parts of the world using Zoom or other online devices. May I add on that? Here you go. I agree with Mr. Hrobota. However, I need to say it's not that bad. I can see this Polish private sector trying to defend itself in this competence race, as you call it, or international race, even if the minister has too little time to cope with this because he's been correcting history textbooks, Polish private sector has been trying to ameliorate the situation. I can see a great battle between us and Indians to create a global hub in ICT and research and place it in Warsaw on Calcutta. So this is happening in front of our eyes. Polish entrepreneurs have been trying to do a lot in green transformation in PV sector. There have been attempts to use green and pure hydrogen as the source of energy, as the propellant for cars. As Minister Bochniasz was saying, Poles have this ability to find their bearings in difficult situation, to find ways to keep afloat. I believe that this democratic capitalism is our asset. But the politics was for our benefit in the past. Now it's a bloody problem in my opinion. So let's imagine a situation today, a Polish business person, a Polish private investor, private entrepreneur, who's been fighting for that position in the world, competing with the Indians, what kind of situation will it have when Morawiecki's government poses a veto on the budget? What will happen in Poland? Not only will we be criticized by virtually everybody, will be deprived of the means. EU will cope with the situation. There'll be some kind of interim budget for the benefit of the Eurozone, it will be even stronger. Polish entrepreneurs will be devoid of the financial resources they need. This is the politics spelled with capital P that casts a shadow on the chances of Poland and Europe. Politics cannot be a predominant if it happens, if we fall for good, or bad moods of politicians. It is doomed to bring, to produce a failure. I wouldn't like to be overshadowed by the politics over Poland. Let me add on that. Prime Minister was speaking about the tipping point in globalization. We know that we can expect lots of changes. The same applies to politics to the role of the main institutions like governments and central banks. We are at the tipping point too. Only recently, hundreds of millions of people were given the salary from the governments within the scope of support programs. And these governments, because their activities were related to pandemics fight, the government's role increases we can be threatened because this is the question of political class quality. We can count off on entrepreneurs, PVs. It's enough to have simple regulations, small incentives, and all of the sudden we shot to become a leader in EU in PV panels. Wherever we centralize, wherever we have administrative decision, these are the places that put us on a losing track. Uh, you feel sorry, uh, Madam Host, that we speak about politics, but you cannot evade it because the question of cooperation, of political decisions, 
of different opinions of different milieus. This is very important, especially when speaking about the European Union. None of the problems in cybersecurity and climate will never solve them in Poland. We can solve them if we are a part of a strong organism that is able to prevent and protect our interest. Good or bad, we are not one of the superpowers that sets the pace. We need to be included. This is a great chance for us, a great chance. So the question is, will we use this chance or will we think this to be a threat that limits our possibilities? The best ones will be running away. Now they can work anywhere. This is what we wanted. This is one of the threats, I believe. We want strangle people to keep them here. They need to be offered good working conditions, legal standards, anything that makes it possible for them to live the way they live in the countries they have emigrated to. You were speaking about Polish business capability private initiative to align with the new challenges. Agility is a very popular notion that we can label them with because they find their bearings in difficult positions, we, which doesn't mean that we should hurdle the problems to make them fight. I would like to have a normal, regular, non-obsessive situation, not entangled ones. We create problems ourselves and then we are heroic to break the problems. This is what I'm going to refer to. Entrepreneurs have lots of agility, but the politics does not have it. And we are speaking about the domestic and EU politics. <laughs> EU politics might have a different perspective. By its very nature, it works a bit slower. We are nearing the end of this panel. I'd like to express my gratitude. If I were to give a punchline to what we've been speaking about in the course of this panel, globalization will be different after the pandemic's time. It has already been different. It will be the result of what happens in national and supranational political milieus and what the business wants to do, what the business finds profitable. There's a great chance and a great challenge at the same time for Poland. This is a very nice notion, but it requires us to mobilize ourselves civic-wise. Pressure for quality of governance. This is why I didn't want to discuss current politics in order not to enter the discussion of whether this is the problem of this ruling party or political class in a broader spectrum. Any of you wants to add on the last thought, something more optimistic so that we don't leave this negative message for our listeners on Saturday afternoon. I can give you an anecdote, anti-globalization, anecdote. Once upon a time, six or seven years ago, there was a governmental delegation calling in Africa. We visited two or three countries. Once talking to the president of one of the countries in the south of Africa, we heard from him, listen up, come here, take whatever you wish, do whatever you wish, finance whatever you wish, we open you wholeheartedly, especially Poles, who are believed to be the knights of freedom, of solidarity, because we have been caught by the Chinese um, in the claws of Chinese. We cannot free ourselves. Not only entrepreneurs, but Polish solidarity legend shows that we are not the country that colonizes others, that we are an honest and frank partner 
it gives us greater chances in this difficult and straight wind. Let us be able to use it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. These were our panelists. My name is Hanna Chicha, and join us for other panels. Thank you. Bye-bye.